Greetings, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation. By now, you may have heard several members of the community shared this with me, but this is huge news and what could very well be the sequel to a blockbuster movie. One of the biggest gold and jewelry heists in history is still a mystery. Let's explore! That was an unintentional rhyme, but I think it works. The Los Angeles Times is the one publication that's close to this in proximity. Mystery shrouds the colossal Brinks heist at I-5 truck stop. Who stole millions in gems and gold? And how much was really in there? The estimates are staggering. And I'm not just talking about the dollar amount, but the range of the dollar amount that was stored in this Brinks truck. But we're going to refer to it, not necessarily from the Los Angeles Times, but from the DailyMail.com that talks about this. And they do a wonderful job of not only portraying the story, and uh, but also with images and, and, and diagrams. And I think this really, as the story has kind of digested a bit, and understanding too that although I've seen some information about this, there's been, the details have been sketchy. But now we're starting to get a little bit more, yea, though it is still a mystery, because one of the things that I think sets this channel apart from others is that I do like to cover precious metals crimes. I have a huge playlist of precious metal crimes, and this is going to go in that playlist. So if you're interested in that type of thing, I hope you will stick around and check out that playlist and subscribe to the channel. Maybe press the thumbs up button and, and hit the notification bell. So this highway holdup that netted thieves, well, they're saying here $100 million, but we're going to talk about that range here in a moment. And rare jewels and gold has left LAPD scratching its head. Crooks waited at truck stop for Brinks van drivers to pull in at 2 a.m. before emptying it in less than 30 minutes, 27 minutes. Now, that's very curious. They know that time. But anyways, um, police believe a team of burglars discreetly tracked the truck carrying $100 million worth of jewels from a gem show in Northern California to a Los Angeles area truck stop before raiding the vehicle in one of the largest jewelry heists ever in history. The thieves robbed the Armor Brinks truck around 2 a.m. on July the 11th at Flying J Truck Stop along Interstate 5 near Grapevine, an unincorporated community in the San Joaquin Valley in just 27 minutes. The burglars managed to bypass the truck's locking mechanism undetected and then loaded the gems into storage containers before hauling them away, law enforcement sources allege. And by the way, I already know what many of you are screaming at your screens right now. Well, hold tight because I think you, you may be onto something, but there's something even bigger that I'm going to talk about in this story that there could be a connection there as well. Investigators believe several thieves had to be involved in the heist, which left 18 victims suffering a loss of multi-millions. The merchandise had been loaded onto the truck the night before following an Exhibit hosted by an international gem and jewelry show in San Mateo, south of, south of San Francisco. It was heading for the Pasadena Convention Center. Police are still probing how the thieves got into the truck and whether or not they knew about its valuable contents ahead of the theft. My guess is they probably did. So here is the, the, uh, the di first diagram here that shows how the gang raided the $100 million. That's in quotes, by the way, from the van. There is the trek along Interstate 5. Stops at Flying J Travel Center around 2 a.m. And two armed guards leave the van. Thieves raid vehicle in 27-minute heist, taking up to $100 million. Well, this is after the van first traveled from San Mateo down Interstate 5. The van was due in Pasadena for the convention. And really, that's just the, where it did. It pulled into the truck stop and then apparently headed left. So police believe this team of burglars discreetly tracked the truck carrying the $100 million worth of jewels. Law enforcement sources told the LA Times that two armed guards left the big rig at the truck stop in the early hours of July the 11th. 
The group of thieves then quickly broke into the truck, entering its tractor trailer, and started unloading containers, holding jewelry, gold, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and lots of luxury designer watchers and watches, including Rolexes. So if it has a trailer, uh, then I don't know if it's, a, if it's a tractor trailer, then it doesn't look like this vehicle here that's shown in this picture and what many people are showing there. It's not your typical Brinks truck, apparently. Nonetheless, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Major Crimes Bureau Sergeant Michael Mileski declined to describe the locking mechanism, but stated it would be exceedingly difficult to crack. He also noted from the outside it wouldn't have appeared the truck was carrying riches, but guards openly carrying firearms while driving the vehicle could have tipped off a watcher by. FBI agents and major crime investigators at the sheriff's office have searched the Flying J for clues, interviewing potential witnesses and reviewing security footage from the truck stop. That's probably where they got their time, the 27-minute time frame. Mileski declined to reveal further information about the case, saying, obviously, we aren't about to say what we have at this stage makes total sense here and here are some images of some examples of the jewelry that were stolen here um yes indeed look at that and uh so they believe several were involved in the heist there is some of the watches a group of thieves quickly broke in the truck entering his tractor trailer Started unloading containers holding jewelry, gold diamonds, rubies, and emeralds, and lots of luxury designer watches, including Rolexes. Yes, indeed. Initial estimates indicated $100 million worth of jewels were taken, despite the truck only having been insured for less than $10 million. So that's where this range comes from. So the insurance is for $10 million, but it could be that it was worth up to $100 million. We really don't know. And that's the part of the mystery here. We are talking multi-millions here for sure, no matter what. It's a huge amount of money, Mileski stated. International Gem and Jewelry Show President Arnold Duke revealed the truck were transporting many 70 to 100 pound storage containers housing gems and jewelry. Previous reports indicated the thieves took between 25 and 30 bags containing an unknown number of individual pieces. We are looking at more than $100 million in documented losses, says Duke. This was an absolutely huge crime, one of the largest jewelry heists ever. We are talking gold, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and loads of luxury watches. Man, that's crazy to think about. He added there were 15 exhibitors each with $5 million to $10 million in merchandise. These are small businesses with their entire wealth vested in that truck. It has destroyed them financially and it affected their health in some cases. Although the loss was massive, Duke noted the thieves did not manage to take all the values, valuables from the truck. They left the con catalytic converter, right? Maybe that was it. Brandy Swanson, the exhibitor director, explained shortly after the theft that even though the jewels are quite expensive, most vendors who travel between jewelry shows typically underinsure their merchandise because they can't afford to insure it fully. That's where the discrepancy comes in. These are mom and pop operators, Swanson said. They're devastated. Some of these people have lost their entire livelihoods. Yes, indeed. And this is some footage uh, likely from a news report there. And uh, But look at that. Uh, amazing. Some of the pieces that you would find in a jewelry show as such. Beautiful pieces indeed, for sure. And 18 victims reported losing collectively $100 million in losses. And Brink said it was less than $10 million according to what they insured it for. Man, look at that. Duke wouldn't discuss security measures at the show, but did note that all the people are photographed as they enter the facility. He also claimed merchandise is typically transported in a semi with a bulletproof cab equipped with tracking and elaborate camera systems. The vehicle is also driven by armed guards, and, it ex and its exact route is kept secret. Officials who have stated the thieves likely tracked the truck from San Mateo, probably probing everybody with knowledge of the route. Flying J Parent Company has requested surveillance video from the Travel Center, which is open 24-7. For those of you in Rio Linda, that means it's open all the time. In an attempt to help law enforcement, help law enforcement with their investigation. 
Brinks issued a statement shortly after the theft stating, we are working with law enforcement and we will fully reimburse our customers for the value of their assets that were stolen in accordance with the terms of our contract. And that would mean $10 million, which leads you to speculation. And we'll talk about those two areas of speculation here in just a moment. Additionally, insurance underwriters claim truck stop cargo thefts are relatively common, but not at this scale, that's for sure. And it's pretty scary to think about. Cargo theft is a massive criminal enterprise uh, in the Los Angeles area. And last year alone saw more than $57 million in cargo truck thefts. California is also the top state for cargo snatches. You would think they would be extra careful and they'd have extra security with cargo things. But that leaves us to another speculative asset. Well, the first thing is, as well, if you'd insured it for $10 million and you have $100 million um, of actual goods stolen, a very well could be a really good insurance claim, an insurance fraud case that very well could have happened in that regards, uh, which means that as some have speculated, like Doctor Who, that this was an inside job. And that is something that has been a common um, uh, claim or accusation by many in the comment sections of my prior videos with such heists as this. Uh, and more likely, it probably is the case. And these two individuals, armed guards, very well may have been involved. Likely, they are interviewing them and working through that. Because how could they have broken this, this lock system? Uh, that was apparently very, very much uh, highly, um, you know, safe and secure to make that happen. The other thing uh, that, you know, so the inside job accusation is something that is obviously something that should be looked at and they should be looking at. Um, if they were smart, they'd be looking at it as an inside job. That'd be the first thing you'd probably reveal other than security footage and the like. See, <clears throat> see who has interest in this. But the other thing which is equally as important, is it could have been a large organized crime organization, potentially, as was the case when I reported on this story. 20 freight containers full of gold, silver, and TV stolen from a Mexican port. It was unprecedented. This was a huge heist that was done that was the original in this movie. It could have been the same group involved in this, highly likely on a container site. Cargo. Yes, indeed. So that's El Cargo that could have been the case here. And this very well could have been related since they're in somewhat close proximity. You know, I don't know. I mean, Mexico, California, and you know how the cartels. And in fact, just recently, uh, former Attorney General William Barr said that we should be treating the Mexican cartels more like ISIS than an organized crime unit. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, they want to be able to fund their operations for sure. And what better way than to steal valuables, uh, including gold, but also TVs, which are very liquid, uh, certainly in many, many ways. That's why it was probably targeted there and why they took them. So very interesting indeed. Fascinating both of these stories. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Thanks again to everybody who shared the story with me. I want to extend a multitude of gratitude to all of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, Comment and subscribe.